Well, we've got the box in the stand now, and you're coming in from the back. This is the back of the transmission, this is the front. And look all we're doing here, we're just going to get the um, get these little selector shaft screws out of the way. And that'll give us the selectors out of our way as well. Now there's little there's springs up the top here and there's there's little detents and it looks like I've my magnets down at the other shop, down the other shed, so that's no big deal. So all we need to do is undo these fellas. So if we loosen these right out, they use like fuse wire to tie them on. I use a heavier wire, but anyway, that's just me. We have a little box here, little parts box, so I'm just going to put all the little items in there for the moment. Then this main high-low lever, it has a screw down the side here. Oh. Boy. That's a tight one. Don't know why it was so tight, doesn't matter. This will be interesting for you. I haven't seen a multi power box pulled apart on YouTube as yet, but oh, there might be one there. We'll have a look anyway. We'll do ours and just see what we can make of it all. And just comes out. Now these screws here this is the plate that holds your selective rails in and this is your lockout so you can only select one gear at a time. This one's your high low, that's where you have high low neutral for starting and this other one's the first, reverse, second and third. Now that lockout's out of the way. first Oh, there's tight in there Now that one's freed up. Now 
and put him straight back on. And we can put the screw in. That's just over washing and all that keeps it all together for me. this next fella out. Yeah, that's not too bad, that's how I expect them, you can just give them a rattle and, and out they come. Once again, straight back on, put the screw in. It's a little bit firm there, that's okay though. Up on the bench now, this fella. Once more, slide him on. Alright, I'll wind this box over so you can see what's in there. I can keep you in frame, that'll be a, that'll be a bonus. Look, that looks pretty good. So you've got your normal box here, then you have a clutch pack up here. This is your multi-power pack up the front. This pipe here, we might just undo that out of the way. Nice and easy to undo now. I'm not sure if it matters which way it goes. There's your main PDO drive coming in, and this is your main pack. That looks okay. On that bottom shaft, I think there's a spline. There's a little bit of rust here from where it's just been sitting, but we can wash that off. There's no, no gear damage, that's for sure. Okay. We'll continue on. Right, this is the bell housing end now. So we need to get some pliers and we'll just pop this throw out bearing out of the way. I have a new throw out bearing for it. Doesn't matter what sort of nick it's in. Hold it up near the microphone. <laughs> That'll get a new one regardless. Then this throw out bearing shaft that's attached to the clutch pedal here. We'll take that out of the way. I'll take these springs out of the way while we're here. Might as well take them and have them drop later. those ones up on here either so they may be really tight Ooh. 
I'll have a bit of a feel, see if there's any slop there. Oh, but very little. I think that's okay. I'll come around the other side and see if I can get this one out. Yeah. I know it's a little spanner, but still. I could always put a big shifter there, I suppose. I'm just supporting the clutch pedal a little bit on the outside here just to try and take a bit of weight off the off the bolt. Clutch pedal can come out. Oh, there's a little wear there. Whether we worry or not, we'll have a look when we get it all back going again. Last time I had a shaft, an aftermarket one of those shafts, it wasn't much good. Okay, that's pretty good too. I think we'll be happy to use that, okay? Now we have a few hydraulic fittings here, and then this fella here, that's your main uh, multi-power control valve. You can move him back and forth, and that just diverts the oil to your clutch pack or away. So. We need to undo these fellas and I'll go and get a little nut gun so we can rattle those away. Three, two, okay. Now this is the one that goes up to the, oh that's tight as well. This goes out to your oil cooler up the front. And the back of that is where that hose goes inside. I'll 
Might need my little crow's foot for this one. No, she's good. Pop him up there out of the way. Okay, we'll start on the bottom one first. That's going the right way. Yep. I can all sit down the bottom there. Feels like everything's glued in. There we go, bit of muck in there. Nothing major. The same idea as on the other about undoing your main circle clip here and letting that shaft drop out. Then you can jack this front one out. So that's coming loose, so that's okay. That's all I really needed to know at this stage. Now you notice something there, on the other tractors, on the non-multi-power tractors, you can't slide this front housing out, there's a support, supports the bearing comes out the back here, so that's a good thing. The bearings are looking really good, looks like I'm not going to replace them. Now on the front shaft here we have Some snap rings and he's left the back one off for lubrication I would say. Yeah the groove's good so it's been been purposely left off. So we should be able to pop that little ring. That's how the oil gets up. But look, that's neither here nor there at this stage. Um, I think we should. No, I'll have to have a quick look. But look, that's. We're going to have to have this bottom shaft out anyway. Um, we want to clean the whole housing and make sure it's all good, so we'll... We'll pop this inner circlip out.
I should have went and got my glasses, shouldn't I? That can stay in the bottom, then there's a washer there. And that should go out the back. And these fellas here, we should be able to jack this front bearing straight off. Where's my nut going, man? Here we go. Cover your ears. This other end out and that'll let that release properly. All right, I just bumped that, bumped this shaft back down through. The bearings are good. Wouldn't mind betting they put new bearings in here because they are, they are really good. So, that's the back of the PVO shaft that's set up on here and once I got so far I was able to just bump it straight back out of the way so I fell out the back into my bucket down there so okay round to the back we go now get it to where you can see it that's upside down, this is the top, and that's the bottom. So right, I'll get my little nut gun again. Saves time this little tool. camera that's good no way there either from memory. There we go. I should get the book out now then I suppose. Probably save myself a bit of a headache now and then. See that looks brand new. It wasn't that long before I bought this tractor. We have a shim there, but the gearbox was done, so and that's when they disabled the multi power. So, okay, and that's our top shaft there. This is our reverse idler shaft, no need to do that yet. Okay, we'll roll him over and slide a few more gears out. Okay, now we've got the planetary off the back, 
we should be able to pull this top shaft here out, the back shaft, and that'll release these gears here to come out. So the planetary actually holds all of that in. So I might have to, I just gotta roll it up here for a look. Okay, well, I had to tip the gearbox back so I could actually work on it and what I've done I couldn't remember how to get this out so I went and had a look at the book and it said tilt it up and, and um, hammer it out. <laughs> well, I didn't, didn't feel like doing that. I thought that sounded a bit dodgy. So this bearing was on loose enough that I could actually use it just slide the shaft back and forth and they just come off using the using it like a slide hammer. So that's okay, that bit's good. Now the centre should come out of here if I get this back in order. Wind him around again, just a little bit, just to... Just got to go up again. <laughs> oh, this bloody thing. The shaft come out a bit in the um, clutch pack. The plates come out of the clutch pack a little bit, so. So that wouldn't let me run it back how I'd like to. Alright, that's back where we should be. Can you see that? Yep. Yeah, the clutch plate had come up here and it wouldn't let me down where I'd like to go. I often get told I'm not allowed to go where I'd like to go. I'm used to that. front snap ring, or front oil control ring. Off here. Then the thrust bearing, or the thrust washer. Coming forward. That should run that. Can you see that again? Sort of. That should let the shaft come out. And that's where the ceiling rings were. That's that's in good order. No problems there. Now this is your multi-power clutch pack. It's just a multi-plate pack. Um, it's got piston rings around the outside. We'll, we'll pop that apart for a look for sure. Now on the bottom here, what they tell me he's done is he's put a spacer in where that bottom spring is. So. I think we should I 
enough to roll him back again, I think. Right, you can just see in there, I've had my arms in there. But look, what we needed to do was, there's a circlip, we had to pull the back bearing off, there's a circlip in front of this second back gear here, and that lets the, that lets the shaft here come back far enough. that our, our gear can come out then that's your sprag clutch with little ramps on it so that should have a spring behind it, the spring's gone and I'd say that's what they've done to make it so this can just come away I believe and That bit there, that's a homemade piece. So what they try and do here is you have that spacer there and that pushes on that so this engages. When these are there all the time, that centre piece is engaged and it's locked solid. Um, normally there's a little spring in there. So what they've done, they've taken the spring out the spring sits up the outside here and they've just made that little spacer up to bypass the multi-power so the spring actually sits in here and then over there and you actually have to push on it so I have to find a spring but everything else looks okay I'll keep that little spacer for reference. And the shaft here, if we bump him forward, like that, and that means we can pop these gears off. We'll keep those folds together. And now this main shaft. Which will just bump it out the front. If I turn this over again, I should be able to catch that instead of dropping it on the floor. There you go then. Oops, sorry about that. And that's your lay shaft. So that's about it for stripping it. The reverse either looks new. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to clean the gearbox out and make sure it's, it's sparkly clean. And I'll find that spring or a spring for that. I'll, I'll probably have to order a genuine one. And... We'll start going back together. So that's it. That's the video for stripping the gearbox. I could have gone into a little bit more detail, but I was getting stuck in here with my arms and bloody all sorts of things happening. So there you go. Stay tuned. We'll try and get a um, get it cleaned up and come back and put him together.